Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 6 of the Toshiba C321. In the previous video, I showed you the recap I did on the power supply, and we tried our best to troubleshoot uh, the IF strip while it was uh, installed in the chassis. However, without horizontal pulses, the keying system doesn't work, and the AGC voltages are not going to be quite what we expect. They were a little bit low. Or was it a little bit high? I don't remember. Anyway, <clears throat> then we painstakingly put the chassis back into the cabinet, hooked everything up. So now it's a matter of turning the set on, seeing how it behaves, and seeing if we can't dial it in a little better. So we're going to start off with uh, the handheld generator I have to establish a baseline. And then if we can get that to look good, then we'll hook it up to a converter box and see what uh, what more we can make of it. So let's get it turned on and uh, see what it does. So now's the big moment whether it flies or whether it fries. And let's turn on a basic pattern. No high voltage yet. A little bit of arky sparky. And as you can see, we still have pretty poor video response and very little sync. We definitely got something arc in here. Interesting. <clears throat> and it has to do with the tuner. So if I mess with the tuner, you can hear arcing inside the tuner. That's not good. And we still got the CRT drive problem. So this thing's not happy. But you know, that looks a lot better than it did. And we do have a some form of a picture there. That's better sync. That actually locks in fairly well. For whatever reason, I guess my uh, my generator isn't doing it for me. We do also have a little bit of high voltage shrinkage there. So maybe my generator is at fault. We still got the uh, twitchy twitchy. For the uh, video output. Not sure what's going on there. I suppose we can try adjusting our gun controls here. doesn't really make much of a difference. Green is the strongest, obviously. And that blue and that red's just going nuts. Trying to see if there's any arcing or any evidence inside of why it would be doing that.
And the snapping we're hearing is actually high voltage uh, regulating. So we turn the brightness down. We turn the contrast down. No more snappy snappy. So that's high voltage regulation problems we need to look at too. But the uh, yeah, the generator I think is at fault here because we're not sinking in and the video's weak, but if we come back to over the air TV, we actually got plenty of brightness and contrast. So let's see what happens when we hook a uh, an actual DTV box up to it. We might actually get a pretty good picture. All right, so feeding it with an actual converter box, we really don't get much improvement over the generator. It's like it's turning the AGC way down. We have very little video response. We got weak sync again. Uh, it's just not doing so hot. And let me see if I adjust the AGC if anything happens. And the longer the set's on, the worse the uh, video problem gets. As you can see, we're almost completely gone. No more uh, video information. And tweaking the AGC really doesn't do a damn thing. Yeah, that's me messing with the vertical and stuff. But you can see now we've completely lost video signal. And then we're back to Arky Sparky again. Uh, there is something going on between the tuner and uh, everything else, I think it's a loss of ground or something. I gotta double check that. But uh, yeah, the longer this thing's on, the worse it gets. But it seems to do okay with over the air stuff, which is weird. I mean, normally you'd expect the over the air to be crummy, but it's when you get to a an actual video signal, an injection of a video signal, that's when it, it freaks out. So I don't know what's going on there. That is totally bizarro. So let me double check the ground straps and everything for the tuner and see if I can turn up anything useful. Alright, so I did find a loose ground connection to the tuner, but I somehow don't think that's going to fix it. There's our high voltage. Let's see, if we go tweaky on the AGC here. So, that's no AGC. And then all of a sudden it appears like it's at maximum or something. So let's go back down to our signal generator. That's better. Whew, it's like super touchy. Let's clean that pot. Alright, so here's the AGC pot back here. Let's see if I can trickle down some magic juice on it. Uh, let me get an appropriate tool. If it's a funky control that I've been chasing all this time, I'm going to feel real stupid. Come on. Cleany, cleany. All right. Let's try this again. And let's see if we can get it to uh, cooperate this time. There's vertical. Mm, there's high voltage. All right. 
So let's ever so slightly turn our AGC up. There's crappy. There's better. There's overloaded. All right, so let's stick it right about there. Let's hit the fine tuning. Okay. No signal, it says. That's all right. And let's go back and dial this again. Yeah, let's just back it off a hair from overload. Cool. All right. Let's hook our crummy antenna back up and see if we can achieve anything that resembles a real picture. This is looking much better. Well, all all right, let's get uh, off of this since they love to give me copyright strikes for PBS stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to have to deal with dialing in the uh, vertical again. And I really need a full 4x3. Like beating you to death with the uh, contrast there. I gotta tweak that. Really junk DC restoration. But look, we have a picture. Isn't that nice? And as it warmed up, you can see that the uh, red flickering thing's gone away. So, sadly, that could be a, a uh, fact of a CRT with some internal issues. Yeah, it's terrible DC restoration. And da 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 da. Let's see, pull for AFT. Pretty good uh, high voltage regulation though. This is only an 18 and a half kilovolt set and it's it's looking pretty good. And of course I have no no antenna again. I love digital, it never works. Come on. It's a little better. Definitely a lot of a lot of contrast. And let's see what our colors look like. Not half bad. Yeah. Let's uh, overly saturate the hell out of that. And then let's adjust our tint. Not too shabby. Let me rig up a different antenna here. This is annoying. All right, a little bit saturated there. Still trying to learn my way around this. Uh, There we go. It's a little better. Much better. Okie dokie. So now that we've established a stable AGC reference, it doesn't look half bad. Actually, it looks pretty good. The video response isn't quite what I'd like. It's a little smeary. But it's not bad. It's still doable, except for the super fine text, which you ain't really going to read anyways. Definitely could use a little video peaking adjustment. I wonder if there's anything in the uh, service manual about that. Alright, let's stick it back on the generator and see if we can get some good patterns on it. Okay, you can see we got a lot more stability now. The uh, 
vertical definitely needs to be tweaked a little bit. And we do have some pincushion geometry issues. But there's no real adjustments for those, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fix that completely. I can tweak L vertical a little bit. And let's see where we're at here. It's one thing I hate about doing vertical setup adjustments on these sets that you always have to retouch the uh, vertical hold still a little stretched at the top Okay. Got a little bit of centering issues there, but see, and that gives it a little bit of an error just right there. I think we might just have to deal with a little bit of stretch at the top. And yeah, let's see here. If we go to a finer pattern. You can see that that video peaking response is really just kind of crummy. There are peaking coils that I can't get to. I might just ever so slightly tweak it, make it a little bit better. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, rocking that uh, peaking coil really doesn't give me much difference here. You're going to go twitchy twitchy again? Yeah, we're good there. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, color again. And yeah, definitely got a little bit of overloading there. Let's see if we can mess with the AGC again. There's like this very fine window. Very fine window of stability with this. See, it bends one way, bends the other way. We need to get that happy medium going on there. Yeah, let's kill that. Let's make sure our grayscale looks all right. Turn down the contrast, just looking at that output there. That's much better. And then we get to adjust our tint, which is like way off. Fourth bar is usually magenta. And you can see we still got a little bit of picture weave in there. That could be just poor power supply design that could be a, a loss of uh, or a ground loop between the transformer chassis and the line operated chassis uh, but the power supply voltages were clean and stable so not sure what to make of that I'm not really too concerned about it Fine tuning on this is so touchy. And then if you lock it in, you can see it's wrong. So, let's see if we can even get to our AFT adjustments here. Yeah, those are your AFT adjustments. Let's see if I can get in here so we can see it better. Yes, no. Little tiny tools. Yeah, sorry to make everybody motion sick here. So, there's still some issues here with the AGC, obviously. And 
I'm not sure if that's the best tool to use. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's just, it's not loving that. Let's see, let me get a different adjusting tool. It's like super bendy. It's got the bends. Yeah, the AFT adjustments are doing nothing. But I can live with the AFT being off. Okay, color looks much better. What I find most annoying about this set is that the adjustments, the service adjustments on these are so touchy. I mean really touchy. Not in a good sort of way. Here's your keyed rainbow. It's got proper shift. The demodulation on this is not as nice as some of the other Jap sets I've seen from this era. Definitely not as nice. Like I said, very poor DC restoration. You have to make sure your brightness levels are set before you mess with your colors, otherwise the colors come out like super saturated looking like that. And it's looking better at least. Uh, let's go back to our... Let's see, I want... Well, I can deal with that. Uh, we do need to... Turn that off. You can see that the right blue verticals or horizontals are really bad. The left one's not too bad. The right one, I believe, requires a hex tool. Horizontal left, horizontal right. And it's probably going to be this guy over here because this is your blues. These ones use a uh, left tilt and vertical amp. And so I bet if I tweak over the blue a little bit on the left, yeah, definitely needs the hex tool thing. So let's see if we adjust the blue. That's pretty close. Yeah, let's do the... That's pretty close. And we still got a little bit of bleed in the middle here. So if we grab the blue here, ouch. tweak it just a little bit. That looks much more uniform. Got a little bit of bleed at the top. What sucks about wearing glasses is, excuse me folks, what sucks about wearing glasses, there's our adjuster back here, is that the lenses will distort the color placement so I can't always see if I'm making the correct adjustment until I get back from it a little bit. But that's much better. I can live with that. That's pretty good looking. And then just one more shot at the uh, color bars here. This thing's come a long way. I can't believe that silly video problem was caused by a touchy AGC pot, but that's my luck. Let's go back to live TV. 
looking pretty good. We still got a little bit of distortion in the sound. Alright, so we got some detector issues. Let's see if it's possible to tweak this easily enough. Discriminators at the back there. I can't really tweak this and have the camera in the holder because it'll be in the way of everything. So I'm going to see if I can dial in the, uh, the sound a little better. Alright, so after tweaking the discriminator a little bit, we have some pretty good audio. The animal was then returned to the wild where it could snuggle up to a real tree. It doesn't even look real. Still ahead, the five easy tips to help you co-parent during this pandemic. And a good morning to Dawn from El Cajon. You are the Fox 5 friend of the day. Presented by Jerome. She likes reading and exercising. If you want to be our friend of the day, head to our website. You could win a gift card to Jerome's Furniture. We're all Not bad, though. This thing's come a long way. All right, so here's kind of where we're at. I mean, the sound's better. I'm probably going to get a copyright strike for that silly song. Uh, the pros on this set, good HV regulation. The cons, as you can see, the video washes out the colors really easily. So it seems like I'm forever having to mess with the, uh, the color. There's still something wrong with the AFT circuit. I'm not really going to bother messing with it. The video response is not what it could be. It definitely needs more peaking. But given the inaccessibility of the IF strip, I'm not sure how, how good I could make that. So as it is, it's a cool little set you can watch. Uh, the color demodulation isn't quite what I would like it to be either. It's not bad. And then this thing is so sensitive about AGC. Uh, it could be a bad control, it could be a variety of things, but it gets a, a pretty decent color picture. And with the new caps in it and stuff, I'm pretty sure that it would be fairly reliable. After it warms up, the, uh, the problem with the red flicker goes away, so that could be a function of a CRT with some intermittent gunk. Uh, but yeah. That's where we're at with this thing. I think it's uh, good enough to send. I think we can send it. There's so much better stuff out there. But this is a cool little set. I like it. It's working. And it's working well enough to use. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Uh, there'll be more TV sets when I start playing around with more stuff, but for now, thanks for watching the video.